Uh, Reg, uh, come here and look at this. Why, it's functioning splendidly. That dog's heart hasn't missed a beat in 189 days. And just think what this will mean to humanity. If we can revive in the human anatomy hearts which have stopped functioning. And I'm certain we can. Oh, uh, don't you think you'd better run along now? You, you haven't much time to dress for your brother's dinner. Aren't you coming with me? Uh, I'll be along shortly. I have a few things to attend to first. All right. Mr. Philip Bennett to see you, Dr. Clark. Oh, uh, have him come in. Hello, Phil. Hello, Reg. Still puttering around with those artificial organs, huh? Why don't you save living ones instead of giving life to dead ones? Not half as fascinating. How are you, Philip? What brings you up here at this time? Well, I know how Dr. Clark feels about any sort of social function, so I thought I'd stop by and ensure the pleasure of his company this evening, by force if necessary. Well, that'll not be necessary. As a matter of fact, I was just about to leave with Reg. <sighs> I wish I weren't so squeamish. I could be working here right now with the great Dr. Clark. What's wrong with being third vice president of Dad's bank? Oh, just a sinecure, that's all. I'd give anything to be doing the kind of work you're doing, experimenting with the unknown. Well, perhaps you should have finished your medical course. Oh, him? You should have seen him the first time he walked into a dissecting room. He knocked six students over in his haste to get out. <laughs> Can't stand the sight of blood. Does something to me inside. Just a soft A rather commendable trait. Uh, shall we go? All right. I'll drop you off at the apartment, give you a chance to change into your dinner clothes. Oh, I knew there was a catch to it. <clears throat> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention for just a moment, please? It gives me extreme pleasure to announce the engagement of Miss Louise Hammond to my son, Philip. You're a lucky fellow, Philip. If Louise hadn't fallen for you, I might have stood a chance. <laughs> Reg is in love with you, you know. Fine situation, isn't it? My brother in love with my future wife. At least it'll ensure harmony in the family. <laughs> oh, that's a consoling thought. Oh, I'm sure you'll survive the blow without any severe damage. <laughs> I'm wounded for life. I've already resigned myself to the life of a bachelor. <laughs> they make a charming couple, don't you think, Professor Toller? Perfectly suited for one another. Right. Beside that, they're very much in love. I think that's rather important, too. But then, anyone could see that at a glance. Especially a great psychoanalyst of your reputation. Well, I didn't think it necessary to mention the obvious. <laughs> Forgive me. But I keep forgetting that you deal mainly in repressions. Uh, have you encountered any new ones lately? You'd be amazed the number of persons who suffer from repressions without even being aware of them. You know, they're prone to blame their misfortunes and unhappiness on, oh, anything from indigestion to the neighbor's piano playing without realizing that something that they innocently carry up here. And how do you manage to drag it out of them, Professor? Merely by permitting them to talk about themselves. Strictly between ourselves. Don't you think that a bicarbonate would be a quicker and much more effective cure? My dear doctor, you constantly belittle my profession without making any effort to understand what it's all about. I venture to say that even you could stand the services of a good psychoanalyst. I? <laughs> well, I have no repressions. Oh, but you do have delusions. Delusion? Yes. Aren't you, even at the present time, conducting experiments that you hope will someday be perfect enough to enable you to revive the dead heart of a human being, thereby reviving life? It's perfect enough for that right now. I've already brought dogs, rabbits, and cats back to life. They're running around my laboratory now just as spry as they ever were. Proves my point. Since when has man had the right to bring back life? after it has been taken away by the Creator. You must realize that there's something more than mere...
Zero. <laughs> Boy, thought you'd be asleep by now. I can see where you're going to spoil him terribly. Oh, don't worry about that. We're great pals. We understand each other thoroughly, don't we? Huh? <laughs> I guess it's time your Aunt Margaret took herself off to bed. I don't stay up too late, you two. No, I've got to leave right away. I've got an early appointment in the morning. <laughs> Good night, darling. Good night, Aunt Margaret. Good night. Good night. Come on, Zero. Happy? Mm-hmm. Gee, I hate to leave. I never seem to get enough of it. I'll remind you of that after we're married. Mm. This is one love that marriage won't cure. Good night, dear. Good night, darling. A special news bulletin from the state capitol. Governor Mason has refused the plea of Wolf Panino's attorneys for a last minute reprieve, and the killer will be executed at midnight tonight. Well, it seems we're always the last ones to leave. <laughs> I'm afraid we've outworn our welcome. Nonsense. You two are my dearest friends. You know, you're welcome here anytime. I don't know of anything more interesting than your constant discussions. Well, when you reach our age, you'll discover that life holds many insoluble problems. And that our discussions about them are merely a feeble means of searching for some solution. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, good, good night. Very good night. night. Why, well, it's Philip's car. Here, Doctor. That will not be of any use now. Shock killed him instantly. What? What? what are... It can't be. It's a... You were certain you could revive the Nino, a killer. Well, if you can revive a killer, why not Philip? A boy who has everything to live for. You said your ultimate desire was to restore the lives of those who are worthwhile. Well, here's someone worthwhile. Restore him. I can make the heart function again, only if none of the other vital organs have been injured. You said he died of shock. Yes, yes. I but I'd have to be certain, very certain. Oh, for heaven's sake, Dr. Clark, we can make certain of that in a few minutes. You know we can. Every moment counts. Yes. You've always wanted an opportunity. Well, here it is. Oh, no. Let the dead stay dead. He is my son. I want him to live. Well, doctor? Very well. I'll try. I'll get my car and bring it around to the house. Yes, hurry, hurry. And Eno refused me. And now,
How do you do, Professor Tola? Is Mr. Bennett in? He's in the drawing room, sir. Oh, all right. Thank you, sir. Well, how are you, Hobart? Hello, Red. Hello, Hello Professor. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Mr. How is he today? It's not a no change at all. You know, it's been five days since this happened. And, you know, I can't understand it. Louise is with him now. Dr. Clark took her into him. And did he recognize Louise? Did she arouse any memories? He acted the same with her as he did with us. It's as if he'd never seen her before. She had to be introduced. He remembered nothing? We had to tell him she was his fiancée. Does she know the reason? Not even she must know. No one must know the truth. Remember that. We're telling everyone he's suffering from amnesia caused by the accident. Yes, it's better that way. If the truth were to become known, the world would look upon him as a ghostly freak. Dr. Clark has agreed to say nothing of this. In fact, he prefers it that way. He wants to study the results of his experiment even before announcing it to the medical world. Well? Uh, hello, Doctor. Hello, Professor. How is he? Physically, he's all that could be desired. He's as well now as he ever was in, in his previous existence. But mentally... No improvement at all? None. His mind seems to be engulfed in a mist which is impenetrable. Well, perhaps it's only a question of time until something occurs that will recall him to himself. Perhaps. But in the meantime, it's frightening. Why don't you speak with him? Maybe if you were to probe at his subconscious memory, you could get Why, him to... Why, I'd be delighted if there's no objection. Oh, none at all. We must try every means. But remember, he won't recognize you. Oh, I understand that, Doctor. It was the first time we'd met. You asked for an introduction. We danced together all evening. You insisted on walking home with me, and we walked all the way in the snow. You said you didn't mind the snow or the cold or, or anything as long as I was beside you. Do you remember? Oh, don't you remember? Don't you? He's been standing like that ever since you left. I want Professor Toller to talk to him alone. I understand. Philip. Philip.
What's a big idea? Scram out of here. We're old friends. We'd like to be left alone. All right, boys. Why'd you stare at me like that? I don't know. I felt I had to talk to you. Well, I guess I ought to feel complimented. Especially coming from a man of your sort. My sort? Anybody could tell by just looking at you and hearing you talk that you don't belong in a dump like this. What did you come here for? Maybe I came here to meet you. <laughs> you sure know how to hand it out, don't you? What's your name, anyway? My name's Phil... Philip Brown. <laughs> you could have said Jones. Yes, I could have, but I happen to think of Brown first. You live around here? Yeah, just around the corner. My name's Helen Langle, and that's no phony. Not married, are you? Are you taking the census around here? No, just curious. <laughs> well, I met a lot of funny ducks in my day, but you sure take the cake. Maybe you uh, might be interested to know that I was sort of engaged until a few days ago. Yeah, to Wolf Panino. What happened? He walk out on you? Say, don't you read the papers? He was burned. Sent to the chair. They called him a killer. Not a very nice guy to have as a husband. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Treated me nice enough. Of course, sometimes I think he talked about getting married just to make me feel good. <laughs> you know, respectable. Kind of fond of him, huh? Yeah, I was. But, well, here I am back in circulation again. It must get kind of lonely at times. I'd like to see you often. No, I don't think so. Be a cop. Sporadi would have tipped us off. Besides, that's the signal. Open it. How'd you know the signal? Signal? Yeah. You knocked too long and too short. Did I? I wasn't aware of it. I just knocked. What do you want? I thought you might need some help. I came to join up with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come to join up with us, huh? Just like that. What do you think this is, boys' town? <laughs> How do we know you're not a dick? You don't, yet. What are you trying to pull off here? Go on. Get out. Beat it. Don't. Don't. I don't like to be pushed around. And another thing, I don't take orders, I give them. Any objections? You'll be making a mistake if you have. He wasn't the kind of man to lead you. I am. Together we can go places. Say, I'm Gimpy. 
You weren't getting anywhere with Mitch anyways. What do you say, boys? Ah, uh, Mitch wasn't for us. That's Jess. That guy's Tim. Hi. That's Eric and Hugo. They're brothers. Hi. I'm Philip Brown. Well, what do you got lined up? Well, there was a diamond drive we had planned, and the whole point about it is timing. Well, what do you know about that? I thought Mitch would kill you. I was just waiting here to find out one way or the other. It's the other. There's no more Mitch. Are you kidding? I'm heading them now, just like your old friend Panino. Yo, what? Mm-hmm. Say, just who are you, anyway? I told you. Yeah, so. yeah, I know, Philip Brown. Well, whoever you are, Mr. Brown, you sure got what it takes. If I got what it takes where you're concerned? <laughs> Suppose you find out for yourself. I will. Come on, let's get out of here. you stop for? Strange. I feel as if I'd been here before. Well, that is funny. I live in this house. Let's go in. Well, say, are we going out first? Well, there's plenty of time for that right now. I'd like to see your place. You mind? You don't waste any time, do you? Well, all right. But don't forget, I'd like to go out. like Panino. Say, if I didn't know better, I'd swear it was him. Well? Sit there and keep it running. Sure it's up there? Yeah, he's been cutting out stone three months. Big enough to knock your eyes out. I will save him the job of finishing. Take that and anything else that's around, but don't stay too long. Once we get into the back and get that elevator switch working, it's a cinch. All right, I'll keep the building clear. If you hear the horn, duck. Officer? Sure. You must have been working late tonight. Yeah, just on the way home. My share, boys. Where do you live? I didn't mean nose into your business. I just thought I'd drop you off. Drop me at the next corner. You mind if I say something? No, go ahead. It's bad business shooting a cop, especially when you don't have to. He didn't know there was anything wrong. You'd have passed by in a minute. I imagine he would have. Makes me feel good inside. That's funny. Panino used to say the same thing. What's that? Oh, nothing, nothing. See, we're concerned about you. Well, we were almost going to send the police out to look for you. Where did you go? I wish you two would mind your own business. I'm fed up with having everybody cluck over me like a bunch of old hens. If I want to go out and stay out, I'll do so.
a crime wave which has aroused the entire city. During the past two months, ten men have been killed indiscriminately. Officers, watchmen, spectators. The cold-blooded callousness with which these crimes were committed have caused both police and newspapers to compare the mysterious leader with the deceased Penino. Early this morning, two former members of the Penino mob, Jess Fowler and Tim Martin, were questioned by police and stated that the Penino mob had dispersed after Penino's electrocution. A special squad under Lieutenant Detective Bradley has been assigned to apprehend the criminals and... It's two months now. Two months. And his conduct becomes more and more extraordinary. Sometimes I can scarcely believe he's my son. Is he still so brusque? That's putting it mildly, Doctor. I hate to admit this about Philip, but he's often downright offensive. He seems to have no consideration for any of us. I wonder what he does when he leaves the house. I wish I knew. Sometimes he's gone for days at a stretch, and when he returns, he refuses to tell us where he's been. He insists it's none of our business. But it is. It is. We may find in these mysterious disappearances some explanation for his unusual conduct. We must find out where he goes and what he does. Doctor, is there any earthly reason why Philip shouldn't recollect something of his past? I'm frank to admit that I'm completely mystified by it. Surely Professor Toller must have some idea of the cause of Philip's strange behavior. I've asked him repeatedly. Yes? Well, it may be only my imagination, but it seems to me that every time I question him, he seems to be ill at ease and refuses to give me his opinion. Why? Well, I've no idea. As I've said, it may be only my imagination. However, he was most anxious to hear all about Philip and made me promise to keep him informed about his conduct in the future. Hello there. Hello, hello. Hello. How was the shopping tour? Wonderful. Terrible. Take my advice, Dr. Clark. Never go shopping with a woman. They ask your advice about one thing and then turn right around and buy something else. <laughs> Where's Philip? In the library. Is there any change? No, dear. I, I'll go in and talk to him. I, uh, I've been meaning to ask you this. It's about the plans for our marriage. You see, Philip doesn't remember anything about it, and I... Oh, but of course, if, if you think it would be best to be married, as we had planned, why, I... I... Lu Louise, tell me. I tell you, that guy gives me the creeps. I'd give my right arm to know who he is. If you ever found out, it'd cost you more than that. He must have plenty of cash. Number once takes his cut. You'd never figure a guy like that would have a hunk of ice for his heart ought to be. It's a funny thing, but every time he walks in that door, I think of Panino. That's why he gives me the creeps. He uses his rod like Panino did. Doesn't care how often it goes off or in what direction. Oh, well, what's the difference who he reminds us of? You got something there. A couple of more months like this, and I'm going to buy a farm somewhere and retire. <laughs> hey, what's keeping you, though? 
He'll be up in a minute. He's downstairs with Helen. I don't know any more about him than you do. He just won't spill. You know, you think being as close to him as you are, you'd at least know.
Oh, me? Well, he figured that if you wanted to keep it a secret, he'd string along with you. Hmm. I see. Of course, I wouldn't tell anybody. You know you can trust me, don't you, Phil? Sure, sure, of course. And just to prove that I'm not ashamed of you, I'm going to take you out. We'll do the town from top to bottom. Oh, baby, won't that be something? I always knew you were a honey. Love me? Uh-huh. You're for me, all right. How about a kiss? With pleasure, Mr. Ben. <laughs> I really go for you, Phil. I really do. More than I ever went for anybody before. Phil, that's a tie. Your hands. You're choking me. I know. Get some sandwiches. Why don't you stick around and have a bite with us? Anything on your mind? Yes. Why didn't you tell me my father was asking for me? Now, wait a minute, boss. I didn't tell anybody. You told Helen? Yeah. Yeah, but she was with me when he came in. I didn't tell nobody else. I swear by all that's holy, I didn't. On my mother's grave, I swear it. Nobody will know, not even Eric. Don't, boss. Don't! He seemed to be trying to explain it to us. It lasted for only a moment, and then he shouted at us to leave him alone. And even threatened us if we attempted to follow him again. Surely, Professor, by this time you must have some opinion. And uh, what is this to do with Philip? They all dwell at great length on one subject in common, namely transmigration of the soul. That's impossible. Doctor, do you remember the night of Philip's death that I told you whereas it might be possible for you to revive the body, you would also have the soul to contend with and you scoffed at me? I still don't believe it. Uh, this is incredible. How else do you explain the sudden change in Philip after he was given new life? Well, how do we know there is such a thing as a, as a soul? My dear doctor, the existence of the soul is something upon which all religions, all philosophies thoroughly concur. They may not agree regarding transmigration or the manner of its immortality, but as to its actual existence, they leave no reflection for doubt. Oh, I can't believe it. If such a thing as transmigration of soul exists, then we three possess the souls of other persons, persons who lived before us. We do not possess the souls, Hobart. The souls possess us. That is, if we proceed along the theory of transmigration. But uh, Philip was 27 years old. Surely he'd remember something about his past. You forget, Doctor, that while you revived the body, the soul escaped. And it is the soul that is the memory, not the body. What manner of soul possesses him now? Whose soul has he? 
That is something that it will probably never be in our power to determine. Hello, Eric. Never thought you'd be calling to see me of your own accord. Too bad about your brother. Yeah. Nice funeral they gave him. Anybody be proud of that? Yeah. Well, come on, come on, spill it. What's on your mind? I want you to get the guy that killed Hugo. Now, don't tell me you want us to find out who he is. No, I know who he is. That's why I'm here. Are you getting soft? I thought you boys always took care of those little matters between yourselves. We usually do. But this is different. I got my reasons. You remember that Helen Langle was killed on the same day as my brother? Well, the same guy did it. You interested? Go on. Maybe you'd be more interested if you knew...
He promised to be here quite early. Perhaps he forgot. Perhaps. But I reminded him again this morning. Oh, I'm sure he'll be here. Well, here he is now. Happy birthday, fellow. Huh? Oh, thanks. We've all been waiting for you. I'm sorry I'm so late. I... Well, I'm glad you remembered, son. I was beginning to fear we might have to celebrate your birthday without you. I got here as fast as I could. Yeah, you're all out of breath. Congratulations, Philip. Yes. yes. Mine also. Thanks. Thanks. I, uh, I'll be down in a minute. I want to clean up a bit. Go right ahead, but don't be too long. I've had my eye on that cake all night. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad he got here. I'm Lieutenant Detective Bradley. I'd like to talk to Mr. Bennett, Hobart Bennett. Will you wait here, sir? I beg your pardon, sir, but there's a Lieutenant Bradley of the police to see you. To see me? Yes, sir. Well, have him come in. Very good, sir. Will you go in, sir? Thank you. You want to see me? Yes, sir. Uh, I hate to intrude like this. We trail an escaped thief to this section. We're covering every house. Well, he couldn't be here unless he broke into the servants' quarters. Yeah, I'll take a look down there. You haven't happened to see anybody come in here during the past 15 minutes, have you? Why? No one. We've been sitting here all evening. Oh, my eldest son. Philip, this is Lieutenant Bradley of the police. How, How are you, Lieutenant? You've uh, been here all evening, have you? Yes, we're celebrating my birthday, as you can see. Say, that cake really looks like something. Isn't it about time you were cutting it up? Well, we're sort of waiting for midnight. See, everything of importance sort of takes place at midnight. New days, new years, births, deaths. Why is that, Lieutenant? I don't know. Strikes me one time is about as good as another for births and deaths. I think the mystery story writers have over-publicized it. However, there's something intriguing about the term midnight. Well, just to show you we don't hold on to superstition, we'll cut it up right now. Uh, you'll stay and have some, of course. I don't know if I can. Uh, well, maybe just a minute. Good. There we are, Lieutenant. Ah, thanks. Louise, will you do the honors for us, please? Of course. Won't you sit down? Oh, thank you. Where was this robbery? A warehouse on 8th Street. We got them all except the ringleader. Do you know who he is? Mm-hmm. One of the gang tipped me off beforehand. Strange, he was shot too. We couldn't tell him apart in the dark. Do you expect to get this ringleader? Sure, sure, sure. Say, I wish my wife could make a cake like this. Yeah, we'll get him all right, no rush. Uh, what sort of fellow is he? Desperate, very desperate. A killer. Yeah, I've got to watch my diet. I can't eat this. Yes, this fellow's a real killer, all right. The funny thing about it is, he works just like Wolf Panino. And he's running the Panino mob. Odd, isn't it? Did you say Panino? Yes, you remember him, don't you? He went to the chair about uh, two months ago. Doctor, that same night. What's the matter? Is something wrong? Oh, no. Uh, just that we'd read about Panino in the papers. Uh, they had nothing on this new fellow. Oh, uh, now that I think of it, he has the same first name that you have, Philip. Philip Brown. Probably not his right name. Ah, uh, probably a phony. Maybe you remember reading about that boy and girl that were killed down the east side last week. They found out his real name, so he killed them. Some relative innocently went down to the place, and that's what gave it away. Uh, where was this place? Oh, you never heard of it. It's down in the slum section. A place called Sparades. Sparades. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe you can't stomach this sort of talk. You folks uh, seldom see this kind of thing. Although once in a while you find a person with plenty of money, uh, plenty of family background, and for some insane reason he decides to become a criminal. 
I never could understand it myself. Well, uh, there are often extenuating circumstances. Maybe, maybe, but uh, I let the alienists worry about that. My job is to catch them. And do you always catch them, Lieutenant? Well, I've got a pretty good average, I guess. Cigarette? Oh, thanks. You, uh, something stuck on your shoe. Oh, so there is. But no, not how to change them. Must be some mud. It looks like time. Yes, it is. Guess I got it on the pavement. Or on the roof. Roofs are covered with tar. I used to play on them every day when I was a kid. Cops and robbers. And I always played the robber. Now I make a living playing a cop. Shows you, you can't ever tell how a kid will wind up. Well, I... So I'd better be going. Strange you didn't see anybody come in here. Oh, we uh, picked up the cab driver who uh, drove the fellow we were looking for away from the robbery. He says he let him off down the street and saw him run in here. Mind if I bring him in to take a look around? Oh, he couldn't be here. Well, then there won't be any harm done, will there? It's just one of those routine things. Won't take a minute. I'll bring him in. Just a moment, Lieutenant. In case you didn't know it, the house is surrounded by police. I assume that much. That's why I want you to help me. Help you? Yes. Go to the door and order them away. You and I will wait here for a while, and then we'll leave together, in case they don't obey. That would work all right, except, uh, what if I refuse to order them away? You forget. You told me the fellow you're looking for is desperate. Very desperate. Philip, you can't. You must... Oh, Philip, stop! Quiet! I haven't much patience, Lieutenant. Well, I, uh, I haven't any alternative, have I? I had to do it, even though he was your son. He wasn't my son. My son died two months ago. First sign of life he's shown since the automobile accident. Concussion of the brain is a serious matter, Louise. For a while, I thought he'd never pull through. Fanino, Fanino, Fanino. Thank heaven, he's coming out of his coma at last. Now, don't try to move. Where? What? What? You've been in a coma for four days, ever since your accident. Darling, I'm so glad you're better. So glad. You'll never know how glad I am. A nightmare, a horrible nightmare. What is it, darling? Nothing, nothing at all. 